Sebring, Florida. We're here the Monday after the 12 hours to try and get a better idea of what Audi is doing this year with its new R18 e-tron Quattro and R18 Ultra. There's no better way to start than by asking Mr. Le Mans. We have chosen to run two, two types of cars, the Audi R18, the Ultra, and the e-tron Quattro. And uh, basically, uh, it's the same, same chassis. Uh, optimized in, in all areas and that's of course fine-tuning on the aerodynamics, fine-tuning on the mechanical setup on the front axle it has a different kina kinematic the car is less uh, let's say a little bit calmer going into the corners it steers in a little bit better and more compliant through the whole steering ratio in slower and, and faster corners uh, for this year that's the same for both of the cars uh, we have a new power steering, electric power steering on, which is also giving us very good damp, giving a very good feedback um, for us, especially on bumpy track like, like the Sebring, and that's why it's very good to race there, but it's also very good to test. Between the Ultra and the Hybrid, uh, you then obviously have all the so the weight on the front with the hybrid, you have the flywheel, you have the electro motors, and um, that system requires some more forward weight mm -hmm. in distribution and, and weight in general. Uh, so the Ultra is really fine-tuned and optimized in, in weight distribution um, as well, but it doesn't have the benefit of the recuperated energy, what we do in braking, and then after 120 we can release that and use that as an as an extra benefit. We, you recuperate energy when you're going into braking zone of corners. And by the time you can recuperate energy up till a maximum, the flywheel up to 500 uh, kilowatts. That's the maximum you can have of, uh, of energy to release. So you cannot store more than that. So obviously you want to make it efficient as possible. That is that when you have stored that amount, you want to release some of it, or you want to always to be in that range. Uh, how you then boost the boost the system of the e-tron Quattro on the front wheels, which is uh, then very uh, very interesting. You can only do that after you reach 120. If that's partial throttle or full throttle, uh, then we we will release it after shortly after then to get the most benefit of the of the next straight. Uh, it's different from different kinds of circuits. Some circuits. Um, this corner braking doesn't allow you to, or doesn't, uh, you're not braking enough to, 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 make, to get to the 500 uh, kilowatt storage. So it's all uh, circuit dependent, it's also how much you recuperate uh, at a certain braking distance. Already the R18 was, uh, was uh, lighter, and that is part of the secret of modern motorsport, and you have to say that the carbon department and the design department at, uh, at Audi Sport have been incredibly uh, successful in getting really strong cars, I mean we saw that last year, and at the same time you are able to place some ballast in the optimum places to help the, the lower and, and, and around the center of gravity for, uh, for a modern sports car. And that is the same which has gone into this year, it's just the hybrid is of course having more forward weight distribution there we, we can it's not that extreme so we we definitely have a, 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 a challenge on recuperation going into corners it feels a little bit like the a differential because you can then control how much resistance you have on the front wheels um, the limiting factor there is the 500 and is at the same time also temperature. You need to have it consistent so mm -hmm. as, as a driver you can really rely on it when you are going in on the car and it's just hanging on to a, a small part of our Michelin tires. That is still uh, the limiting factor. It has a really big relevance to uh, to you guys, uh, what we what we drive on the on the on, on the normal road, I'm sure that at the early stage you will see Audis 
probably be in quattros with uh, with uh, with a similar type of, uh, of of drive front wheels, and that is uh, that is what we benefit from racing, and that's what we have seen that Audi has always had relevance to what they do. It is really like a competitive family feeling within uh, within Audi. We are going this year with, uh, you can say, two programs, um, which is making it even more interesting. But of all the drivers, are really uh, all are having incredible experience and incredible success. So putting all that together is that we, we all want to win, but we also know, like we winning in the 12 hours of Sebring, the other drivers uh, have great respect for that. They have a lot of uh, input to making sure that, that one of the cars wins. So um, it might, from the outside world, seems, but that's modern motorsport and the way that Audi goes uh, goes on with the motorsport. We are all a part of that and uh, it's very nice to win, there's no doubt about it and we have a, we keep each other very sharp and, and, and goes to pushes to the sort of the limits of what we can do and at the same time Doug Dool, like he, that he likes that and he keeps of course in a way you are, you can say you are you're always motivated because you are allowed to show what you what you can, and uh, that will be the same now when we go to the different programs for, uh, for this year. Managing the various programs is an interesting subject. For that, we decided to talk to Audi Sport boss Dr. Ulrich. See that in the next installment. I remember I, um, I got friendly pulled to the side by the local sheriff a little bit further down between here and uh, Miami and I had uh, we had uh, Dr. Kober was in the back seat uh, he had um, an early flight and uh, Mr. Boretsky who um, is a proud uh, is a proud boss of our engine department was next to me and uh, when I was speaking with the sheriff I said by the way we won the, the race the 12 hours of Sebring and he was was kindly interested and uh, if that wasn't enough to get away with the, the I think I've gone two miles over the speed limit uh, maybe one at, uh, at a little a little town uh, trying to reach the airport then uh, Berezky opened the window and uh, we have bought a few of the newspapers and he said um, you can see it's true that he, he is a winner and I could then say back yeah and he's the first first man to to, uh, to win a, a sports car race with a, with a diesel engine so we, we, we chatted a bit with the sheriff uh, and then we caught the time back and we made the plane. <laughs> no ticket. No ticket. Oh, why? I mean, it was a few miles. Yeah. A few kilometers. Yeah. <laughs>